I know all of you are familiar with this chant. It's from Disney's The Lion King. In its opening scene, it features how different species of animals show how they are interconnected with one another, wherein this idea is referred as the circle of life. This idea was based primarily due to the concept of biodiversity. Let us explore how living things exhibits unity and diversity in this episode of Science at Home. Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we're going to be discussing about the concept of biodiversity in which this concept is connected to the central theme of biology which is unity and diversity. So as you can see, the term biodiversity came from the words bios which means life and diversitas which means variety simply because that biodiversity refers to the existence of different species of plants and animals in particular within a specific environment. But for our discussion, we're gonna be focusing about the Philippine biodiversity. But before that, let us try to look at some facts regarding to the Philippine biodiversity. So as you can see right here, the Philippine biodiversity is considered as one of the mega biodiverse countries in the entire world simply because that it is a home for many endemic species. When we talk about the term endemic, it means that these are the species that can be found only within a specific location. In connection to this, the Philippines also ranks fifth in terms of the total number of plants and animal species. And lastly, the Philippines is also considered as a biodiversity hotspot simply because it is a home for the study of different species and also it is considered as an area in which many species extinction occurs. Why do we need to study biodiversity in the first place? Now, it has something to do in terms of its socioeconomic value and at the same time in terms of the scientific study basis. But why is biodiversity important in the first place? Now first, biodiversity serves as a life support system for different species of plants and animals simply because that they interdepend with one another. And lastly, it is considered as a bioresource in which most of our food and clothing and other needs are being extracted from. Now let us try to explore the different levels of biodiversity. As you can see, it is represented by a pyramid in which it shows the hierarchical levels of biodiversity. So let us first start with the bottom most level, which is the genetic diversity. So as you can see, genetic diversity has something to do with the existence of the different genes within a given species. Best example right here is in terms of bananas. There are many variations of bananas in terms of its color and its taste. So the next level is the species diversity, in which this refers to the existence of different species within a given group of living things. Best example right here is the existence of the different big cat species so such as the tiger, the lion, and the jaguar. And lastly, we have the ecosystem diversity in which this refers to the existence of different ecosystems. Best example right here is the existence of the different biomes in which it helps in terms of catering the different needs and adaptation of every species of plants and animals. So this picture, as you can see right here, best represents the ideas of the different levels of biodiversity. So the one that is on the leftmost part shows the idea of genetic diversity. So as you can see, there are different birds in terms of their feather colors, but it belongs on the same species. And the middlemost column represents the species diversity in which you can see different animals and plant species. And the rightmost column represents the ecosystem diversity in which you can see different habitats such as swamps, forests, and mountainous areas. Next, we're going to be discussing about the idea of threatened species. But what are threatened species in the first place? Now, when we talk about threatened species, this refers to any species of either plants or animals that is in danger of extinction. But how do we classify threatened species in the first place? So we refer to certain criteria. So number one is in terms of its habitat destruction. Second, we refer also in terms of the natural and man-made factors that may affect its extinction. Third, we have the idea of its population size reduction. And fourth, we have the distribution of its species based on its geographic range. Threatened species can be classified into three categories. So the first one, it can be a critically endangered. 
Then we have the endangered, we have the vulnerable species. Okay, let us go first in terms of the critically endangered species. Now, when we talk about critically endangered species, these are the species of plants or animals that has the extremely high risk of being extinct. So, some examples of critically endangered species in the Philippines are the tamarau, the waling-waling, the Philippine eagle, and the dugong. Next, we have the endangered species. Now, when we talk about endangered, these are also considered as a critically endangered species. However, its survival within the wild is very unlikely. So some examples of the endangered species in the country are the butanding, the mulavi tree, and the Philippine turtle. And lastly, we have the idea of vulnerable species. These are the species that are not yet critically endangered but is under threat. So some examples right here in the Philippines are the tiger cat, the pitong tree, seahorses, and the Philippine duck. Now, let us go to the idea of the biodiversity loss. So, biodiversity loss is connected to the concept of extinction in which this refers to the idea in which the last member of a given species dies. So, when we talk about extinction, this refers to the idea in which there are no more members of a given species that are existing. So, the extinction of species can be caused by two factors. So, this can be either by natural or anthropogenic. So, number one are the natural causes or these are the factors that are caused by the environment. And second, we have the anthropogenic cause in which these are caused by man-made factors. So let us go first in terms of the natural causes of extinction. So as I mentioned a while ago, natural causes of extinction are the ones caused by the environment. So technically, these are the factors caused by natural disasters. So this can be either by the change in landscape, such as global warming and climate change, or it can be either meteor impact. So as we all know, so the extinction of the dinosaurs are caused by the meteor impacts. Or lastly, it can be either caused by the extreme heating and cooling of the Earth's surface. So most of the mass extinctions that occurred within the history of life in here on Earth are caused by these natural causes. Next, we have the anthropogenic causes of extinction. So, as we mentioned a while ago, the term anthropogenic, so anthro, which means man, these are the factors caused by human activities. So, what are the different anthropogenic causes of extinction? So, let us try to explore them one by one. So, these anthropogenic causes can be summarized in terms of the acronym HIPPO, so the H I double P O, in which each letter of this represents for a specific cause or anthropogenic cause of extinction. So, the letter H represents for habitat destruction. Letter I for invasive species, P for population growth, and the other P is for pollution. Now let us go first in terms of the habitat destruction. Habitat destruction is considered as the primary cause for extinction in which it is connected to different activities of humans so such as deforestation and oil spills. So next we have the idea of invasive species. So when we talk about invasive species, these are the species of either plants or animals that were introduced by humans for economic purposes. So some examples right here are the tilapia. So the tilapia fish that we all know is not considered as a native species here in the country, but rather it was imported during the early 1970s as a response of the government for food shortage. And other examples of invasive species are janitor fish and the golden cohort. So the golden apple snail or the golden kohol in which these snails were placed in different rice fields during the 1980s as a response for food shortage. But later on, these apple snails reproduced so quickly and it created a devastating effect in terms of the rice fields. So these apple snails reproduced very quickly and became a pest later on. Next is in terms of the population growth of humans. So with regards to this, what happens is that there are more humans who need consumption of different resources and what happens is that resources are being overused which later on causes destruction within the environment. So the next P is in terms of pollution. Now let us try to explore the different ways of how humans causes pollution and destruction to the environment. So first we have the acid rain. So acid rain is produced due to the high concentration of sulfur within the atmosphere. So this sulfur dioxide emission came primarily from smokes, which can be traced in terms of vehicles and factories which are being controlled by humans. So what happens is that the emissions of sulfur dioxide are being concentrated within the atmosphere and later on when it precipitates, so what happens is that it develops into sulfuric acid, which then causes the acid rain. So next, we have the depletion of the ozone layer in which it is caused by the different chlorofluorocarbons. So chlorofluorocarbons are found within different refrigerants such as different air conditioning units and refrigerators. So next, we have the idea of eutrophication in which it is connected to the idea of 
excessive buildup of nutrients within the bodies of water. So what happens is that when there is an excessive buildup of nutrients, the amount of dissolved oxygen tends to lessen. And when there's a lesser amount of dissolved oxygen within the water, so what happens is that most of the aquatic species that are found within these bodies of water tends to die. So therefore, this idea results to fish kill. And lastly, we have the idea of overexploitation in which many resources are being overharvested way beyond on what is really needed. So that concludes our episode for today. This has been your Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!